Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Longhorn Weekly. Longhorn's head football coach, Charlie Strong. Longhorn's coming off that uh, outstanding, exciting win over the Notre Dame Fighting Irish on Sunday night over Labor Day weekend at Royal Texas Memorial Stadium as they won 50 to 47 in double overtime over the Fighting Irish. The Longhorns this week will be getting ready for the Miners of the University of Texas, El Paso, UTEP. The UTEP Miners will be in town to take on the Longhorns on Saturday night. And Coach Strong will be joining us in just a few moments as he's uh, made his way over from the uh, Longhorns practice field. So he'll be joining us for a few moments, or in a few moments, he'll be joining us for the program. Also coming up on uh, the program tonight, of course, Quan Cosby will join us uh, coming up in a few minutes as well to visit uh, with Coach Strong and uh, our special guest tonight. Well, of course, we have a special guest coach each week and uh, the special guest coach, uh, varsity coach for Texas this week is brand-new head baseball coach David Pierce. He'll be joining us coming up a little later on in the program. So you wonder about how the Longhorns are able to get the win over Notre Dame, some of the things they did. How about the fact that they rushed for 237 yards and didn't allow a sack? in the contest. It was the first sack-free game for the Longhorns in two years. Since 2014, it was 16 games ago the last time the Longhorns had a sack-free game. They had 517 yards of total offense, the most by a Texas team against a top 25 team since they had 557 yards against then 17th ranked Baylor back in 2011. That was 53 games ago. Also, uh, the veterans really stepped up, had a big part of it, led the way and held their own against that uh, Notre Dame offensive front. And we'll get uh, Charlie's thoughts on that as well coming up. Uh, when you look at the uh, defensive line for Texas, senior defensive tackle Paul Boyette, junior defensive tackle Puna Ford. And how about redshirt sophomore Chris Nelson, who's a Big 12 Conference Defensive Player of the Week. They played hey, the lion's Blunkers. share of the snaps no big deal. in an extreme. Charlie Strong, game. baby. And uh, from their inside positions, they combined for 18 tackles and three tackles for losses. So those were some of the superlatives that happened for uh, the Longhorns in that game. You hear the applause going on here inside Pluckers. This is where we bring you the program each week. Pluckers, the West Campus location here at 2222 Rio Grande. So head coach Charlie Strong is with us now. I mentioned the fact that uh, you were coming uh, straight from the practice field because I know that's, uh, that's a, it's a quick turnaround because you guys are putting in all the hard work coming off a win. And I asked you about this after the game the other night, Charlie, the fact that it's, it's one thing – to get a victory, it's always good to get a victory. But by the same token, uh, it, it's it's good to have the players' attention after win to address the things that you really wanted to correct this week. Well, you know we have a short week, correct? So we, um, I what it did, we played on Sunday, so I gave on Monday off. So now Tuesday wasn't really a Tuesday because usually it's a work day for us. So I was, uh, it, it felt like more like a Sunday after a game because. You, you, you got to get the players in and just make sure that you no know, that we're injury free and just try to find out you know how they're feeling and so then Wednesday more or less became like a Tuesday but you really couldn't hit on that much because you play here on Saturday and so today we were kind of out there a little long just so that we can just still get our work in because tomorrow on Friday we don't do much at all then we go get ready to go play the game on Saturday but it's uh it's been a fun week uh, you know having a big victory and it's good. And I told our players, I said that, you know, one game doesn't make a season. And if we still have to get better. We still have to improve. But, you know, it's it, we cannot let this game who define really who we are. And it is. It's it's, it's uh, the people that ranked us. They can, they can always How unrank you. They, yeah. can, they can still do it. But don't worry about it. You know, we, we've worked hard to get to this point. Let's continue to work hard. Uh, you mentioned all the different days when you talk about about being kind of off the regular uh, practice schedule and preparation schedule. How challenging is it for you and for the coaching staff? You had to give the guys a day off, and you did, and they were pretty excited for folks who saw the locker room uh, uh, video about that. But uh, how challenging was it for you and for the staff to get the prep that you wanted to get together and yet kind of get them corralled back in in a game week type mode and schedule, especially dealing with the type of excitement that it was, but even logistically, physically getting on the schedule that you want to get on a game week schedule. Well, the reason why I gave my Monday off, it was so that we could get uh, get on the schedule and then ch start working on uh, UTEP. So, uh, so what we did was um, on Monday, 
we you, we grade their film, so we always watch it. Like we played on Sunday night, so we grade the film, and then I have a team meeting that evening, and so we go through uh, just the grades and talk about who played well, who didn't play well. And but I didn't do it on Monday because we were also when I got them back on Tuesday. That's when I had to. So we had to do it on Tuesday, and it was it was um, it was just so Monday. It was more for the coaches mm-hmm. so that we can get our preparation going and we have time to just look at tape and, and you look at it, you, you always have to be ready because when they come in there on Tuesday, you still got to give them some information and make sure that you give them just what we call tip sheets in, on your next opponent. Uh, I, I brought up some numbers and was curious to get your, your, your thoughts on some of these, the, some of the superlatives that came out of this game. Uh, you want to be a football team – that, that runs the ball with power, with a, with efficiency. But by the same token, with uh, what you get from Sterling with the offense, we got a chance to see a good sampling of that, 86 plays. I asked him the other day, I said, is that kind of the target range? He said at Tulsa last year we had 85.5 plays a game. So he said, so we're right there in that. But you ran for 237 yards, and he didn't allow a sack. So, I mean, those are things I know that has to please a, an, an offensive coaching staff and a, and a head coach overall. Well, you know what really pleased me about it is that you look at our run game, how many times we ran the football. And I want to say we ran the ball around, what, 50, 51 times. And and so then that was just showing just – we talked about just being a physical team that day, and we had to have some mental and physical toughness to to us. And and we were. We were a physical team. I think we threw the ball with – Bouchelle threw it 26, and Swoops only threw it one time. So if you look at – that we talk always talk about balance, but we weren't balanced because we ran the ball so much, and we we had. But it was a physical game, and that's what you wanted to establish early, and we established the run game early. I, I think uh, someone brought up that you ran the ball on first down 25 times. I think it was something right. like that, and, and you continue to do it because you were getting good production on first down. Well, you always want to win on first down. So when you get to second, you want it to be just like anywhere from the, you know the four to six range, because then you can manage third down. Because you go get four more yards, then you make it third down, third and one or two, and it worked. We ran the ball. You know, everybody goes, "Oh, they're going to run the ball." Okay, until they stop us, let's keep running the football. When they stop us and we get a bad play, then then okay, then we'll worry about it. But it was we were our offensive line did a great job, and they protect even. Uh, they protected our quarterback very well. You look at uh, Bushy, he's still back there, and he delivered the ball well, even when uh, Tyrone threw it at one time. But we were able to, uh, we were able just to, contr- to control the line of scrimmage. You got a lot of uh, real positive vibes and a lot of questions about the play, not only of Shane Bouchelle, but also of Tyrone Swoops, the way, the way that you managed your quarterbacks. And, and, it, and it, the, the most off question I seem to get is, so that's what they had planned. It was that, that – that's how they – I mean, was – did it unfold in terms of your quarterback play kind of the way that you and Sterling had kind of thought it out that it would unfold like that? Well, you really don't know how it's really going to unfold and because you're going out – here you are on, with a national audience, with a packed house. And, you know, by the way, our fans were just unbelievable. I mean, I don't think that they could have yelled more louder than what they did. They were from the start. They were into the game. But you just don't know how it's going to unfold. So you walk out with a freshman who's never taken a college snap before, and you have a senior who's sitting there who's been there and who's been in the battle for two years. And uh, the good thing about those two guys is just the relationship that they have. And uh, they uh, uh, so even when I told uh, Swoops that Bouchel was going to be the starter, you know, Swoops like, Coach, I'm good. You know what? I, I talk to him. I make sure that he stay into the game. And so I said, but you're going to play. And then when he goes in there with his 18-wheeler package and you're looking at one drive that he put together, it was, it was amazing to watch it happen. Then you watch what happened there at the end of the game. But with, with those two quarterbacks, they have so much respect for each other. You, you know, it's not where you play one against the other because they, uh, you know, Swoops is very mature and it's not, he's, that's not going to phase him. It, it, it really won't. And then Bouchelle does a great job of handling himself. So – it, it played out. It played, it played out great for us. And your running backs also good, especially uh, Deontay ran uh, with with great balance as well as the power and the speed. And Chris was able to spell him a little bit as well. And uh, I, Sterling was talking about how you may see even a little more balance between those two guys this week, depending on things. But uh, I know you had to be pleased with what you got out of your running backs within the context of the running game. Well, you look at it. You're right. You have two big backs, and that's what we was talking about. Hey, we. 
we have to impose our will on these guys. And we got two big backs. And then if you want to count uh, Swoops, either a big back, whatever he is, he's a load himself. But uh, just running the football, you, you look at uh, – Foreman made some unbelievable runs, and then you're right, you can always come in. So you, here you are, you're tackling him, and then there comes 25, and you go, oh, God, now i got to tackle him. And then there comes uh, Swoops with a piece of it. Now you have to tackle him. So it could make it a long day for a defense, and that's what we wanted. When we get it to the fourth quarter, let's make sure that we're, we're the ones who deliver the blows. That's Star State's all about staying fresh. And because one thing, uh, at, at, when chatting with Sterling about it, he said, we could tell that Notre Dame was starting to tire. And I said, are you able to tell that because you're down on the sidelines? A lot of offensive coaches are up in the box. He goes, I can tell a little bit. He goes, but the players are telling us. Yes. They're coming off saying, coach, they're getting tired. We're wearing them out a little bit. So you're you're getting that kind of feedback from your guys on the field. Well, the, the players are the ones who can tell you because they're they're out there on the field. So they're the main ones who sitting there saying, hey, listen, they're wearing down. Hey, coach, they're getting tired. Keep running, keep running. But we were going to run it anyway. Whether we tired them out or not, we were going to run that football. And because uh, I, I just feel like that whenever you're able to run the ball against a defense, then you're saying that we're a lot tougher than you. And it's what we wanted to show. All right. We've got a lot to get to on the program. Quan Cosby will join us for the next couple of segments coming up. We'll talk more not only about the win over Notre Dame, but getting ready also for the UTEP Miners later on this hour. David Pierce, the brand-new Longhorn baseball coach, will join us as well. All of that and more coming up as we continue live from Pluckers, the West Campus location, here on the Longhorn IMT Radio Network. From the gun, swoops with it, turns, and shakes off one tackle. Still on his feet. To the goal line, he dies. Touchdown, Texas wins. Tyrone swoops the game winner. And the Longhorns have beaten 10th ranked Notre Dame. We welcome you back here to a Longhorn Weekly, live from Pluckers, the West Campus location, along with head coach Charlie Strong on Craig Way, and of course, Quan Cosby alongside as well. Now, where were you stationed, Quan, at that <laughs> point when Tyrone went in? Were you behind the, the uh, the goal post next to our parabolic. He ran out on the crowd. I, know, <laughs> I don't he, know where he was, but I saw him run out. Did on he the run it out dog pile afterwards? I was everywhere, man. I I was behind at first, and then I ran over to the. I was everywhere. Let's just put it like that. Uh, it was cool. Uh, I was in the mix, man. And I laughed because often I'll process it after, and I was like, man, I wasn't even thinking. I was just going crazy. Um, so excited for the guys, for Swoops, everybody involved, Coach. But, uh, no, I was out there in the mix as if I had on a suit. Now, were you part of the group that was actually hoisting Coach Strong Air when he was doing the crowd surfing thing? There? No, he wasn't. He was, uh, he was, I could see where he was. Yeah. <laughs> I'm too old for all that, man. Yes. No, yeah. I would have, these shoulders, old banged-up shoulders would have been <laughs> torn Char up. Charlie, how does something like that happen? So, I don't know it's very spontaneous, but, I mean, do they tell you, Coach, we're picking you up, or they just no, start picking you up? How does that work? Me. What happened was, like, we all ran, and, you know, Swoops was there, and I ran up in a crowd with them. And then all of a sudden, I'm getting grabbed from behind. They said, there he is, grab him. And they grab me. And I was like, come on, don't do it. No, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> nah, it's cool. The guys were excited, man. And uh, on so many levels, being down there and slapping them on the pads and all the above, to see the looks on their eyes. And, and the best part, really, is after all that, we go off the field. And uh, Boyette and, and – Jer uh, Malik runs in there in, in, when we're doing post game and chest bump me. That's it, right? That's Texas football. And, and I was like, that's so cool because ultimately what you see is uh, when you play for yourselves, it's usually not as good. But when you're playing for the alum, when you're playing for your coaches, when you're playing for each other, things like that happen. So that's the way I process them running. They did not have to come in that room and chest bust jip butt me and pick me up. So it was really cool, man. Yes. Yeah, and, and that's part of what you strive for as a head coach, isn't it, Charlie, that, that the guys lead themselves. I mean, they take the direction and the game plan that you guys – but it's their leadership that helps solidify and, and uh, mature a football team, isn't it? You know what has happened, Craig, is our seniors and in in there is not that many that have been unbelievable with their leadership. And, you know, from Tyrone to, to, to Perk to Tim Cole, Tim Cole's – he does a great job. He plays behind Malik, but he's he's probably – he is the leader of our defense, him and, him and Boyette. But you do – and when they take ownership, which is happening, when the seniors take ownership of the team, then that's when the team begins to change. How does that happen, Juan? How does, how does the team begin to take ownership of it themselves? It's buy-in, you know. It's, it's listening to the coaches. It's having 
goals and actually going after them. It's understanding that you can, you know, the coach is going to tell you so much and they're going to drop the best play that they believe is going to help the team. But it takes you to execute a lot of it. It's understanding every piece from that standpoint. It's going back to this summer. They were putting, they're getting in work and it was hot. You know, it rained a lot, but when it did and it was hot and they were still out there working, all of those things, and that's where it builds. You know, a lot of, you know, Vince will tell you, all the guys who, we won the Natty that summer. You know, all the rest of the games was a matter of executing, finishing, doing our job. But those guys started last summer and just work, 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 work. I mean, you think about, you read the numbers off earlier. Mm -hmm. What was in South Bend and what was in Austin, that is that is transformation. <laughs> That's bumblebee type yeah. stuff. And so um, that, you know, coaching staff and senior leadership. You know, I've said it all night, but physically on paper, they can play with the Cowboys, but mentally, that's what you're starting to see grow. Charlie, the the other things that come to mind, and you you made a point of it this week. So did uh, Sterling. So did Vance Bedford about everybody reining it back in and starting the process, getting ready for UTEP as well. Uh, is it more difficult to get a team focused after a win like that or after a disappointing loss? Well, when, you, you didn't. For sure, I'm so glad we didn't lose that game. Right. <laughs> because it, it would have been hard because they played so hard. And and then um, they were they themselves expected to win that game. And so we had, we had a loss that game. It's, it, it would be really tough right now. And then the reason why I said that they expected to win that game, it was just the way they prepared. I, t I told them last Friday – we go through we do what we do more of a mental walkthrough they don't say they don't say anything they just like practice and then saturday the same way and then on sunday we gonna play the game i was like okay guys you can talk you, you can say something and they said coach we're good we're good and i said oh, okay then but you were just just seeing a whole mental preparation all the way up to the game time and though this week has been tough because that was a that was a physical game now, it was a physical game and from both on both sides of the ball, you played an outstanding opponent in, in Notre Dame, and, and but it was very physical. So it's just getting them back, getting them back, and where uh, it's a short week, but it just the the preparation and the time that we have to get us back there. All right, we'll talk more about that coming up as we continue live from Pluckers, the West Campus location. This is Longhorn Weekly with head coach Charlie Strong, Juan Cosby with us this portion of the program as well. And we'll continue in a moment. Shotgun, Bouchelle will take the snap, first down and 10. Shane off, play action to throw. Going deep, over the middle, looking for Hurd. Gerard the catch, say goodnight to it. Gerard Hurd, right down, did he get in? They'll say he's down at the one foot line. Back here on Longhorn Weekly with that coach Charlie Strong. Quan Cosby with us. By the way, for those in the restaurant, and this is the added benefit of coming out to uh, Pluckers. How about a Pluckers welcome for uh, Vincent Paul Young standing over there. Vince Young here <laughs> in the house tonight. <laughs> B.Y. is here. One of the best in the business right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Um, the the, the, the uh, long pass there to Gerard Hurd, and he's down at, one, uh, at the one-yard line or the one-foot line. I wanted to give you a chance, Charlie, to talk about the conversation you had with him after there because, uh, because one thing we've always heard about Gerard is he's – Always had wheels. Uh, you heard my call say, say that I thought he was gone in the end zone. He ends up getting uh, tripped up at the one-yard line there. But uh, take us through that, that, not only the play, but what the conversation he had with him afterwards. So he comes to the sideline, and uh, he's, he's walking around like, I scored. I said, no, you got, you got ran down by a defensive back. And I said, you talk about you can run, so what happened? And I said, what's so bad? It was a guy that fell. He dove over the guy and tackled you. <laughs> he said, coach, ready to grab me by my feet. He didn't catch me. I said, but he tackled you, so you didn't score. And I said, you know what you was concerned about more of doing that dance? You know, because right. one day he scored in practice. He has this little dance he does. I said, you were more concerned about doing that dance. You thought you were gone. <laughs> but it, it was just so – I was just so happy to see him catch the ball. And yeah. you look at a guy who's our quarterback, and then he's such a – a very unselfish player, he comes to me and says, Coach, I just want to play. And I said, well, you tell me what position you want to play, and I'll move you. He said, receiver, inside receiver. I said, go. And, and you can just look like he does works every day, comes to work every day, catches the ball, has such a great attitude. I think by moving him in that group has really helped that group because they see how hard he works. 
and now they all work. Like Amani, see the catch that he made. Yeah, that I mean, nice. unbelievable catch. John Burt, look what he did. And some of our guys didn't even hit that. Like, you, you ain't had a chance to see Colin yet. You ain't chance to see little Jordan, Doran Leonard. The two catches that Jake made, made a guy miss, and then yeah. he goes. Duvernay, we, we haven't seen. So there's guys that we haven't even seen yet, Craig. And I, and I told our guys, I said, I just want to be – I want to be the fastest team in the country. But bar none. I want us, this football team to be the fastest team in the country. You brought up Jake Oliver. And he the, to a lot of folks are like, who's that guy? Who's, the, who's number <laughs> six? But he's <laughs> representing that six. Yeah. Yeah. Right, there you go. Yeah. I know I made you happy, old number six there. But, but he's a guy you said from day one – has, has always been committed to exactly what you wanted to get done and worked very hard at it. And worked hard. Jake has lost like 22 pounds since last year. He's lost 22 pounds. And he, each day we would be at practice, I used to call it, I say, there's clutch. There is Mr. Yeah. Automatic. If the ball's in the red zone, third down, find him. He's going to catch the ball. We threw one, made a guy miss, gets the first down, then we threw another one. He probably only one touch, the one that we threw and Shane overthrew him. I think if he had to just stay with his route, he'd been fine. But he tried right, to come back. He tried to fade back away from it. If he just stayed with it, he's going to be fine. But it, but it's you know you just see different guys and different guys are making plays. Quan, and that obviously as a former standout receiver, that makes even the really good accomplished receivers better when you've got more in the mix because there's more for a defense to pay attention to. It really does, and a lot of people think you know there's. That selfishness as uh, receivers. And from an NFL perspective, it is. But in college, we had a saying. We want everyone to eat because we know the work put in. We saw each other all week. And what I want people to understand is what Herd is doing, that is not easy. That is not easy at all. When you go to running routes, when you go to tracking the ball, and he, he also probably has that appreciation for it because he's thrown it before and got mad at receivers. But it's harder <laughs> than it looks. And he made the play, you know. And, and – I think he's going to make plenty more. So what he's doing, what that entire group is doing with young quarterbacks with swoops, I mean, it's, uh, man, I tell you what, it, 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 things like that is why I couldn't contain myself at the end of the game. Because, <laughs> I mean, seeing every dude, I mean, there wasn't a person on that field did not contribute. And, and that type of, you know, winning football, hopefully leading to championship football is exciting to see. Charlie, do you have to uh, – keep Gerard engaged in the quarterback element just in case you have an emergency situation. How much work does he give you from that perspective as hard as he's had to work in transforming into a receiver? Well, I told him that you will be our third quarterback. So even if you go play wide receiver and work, how much time you play or whatever you want to play, so that would be the best, quickest way to get on the field because we're going to play a lot of guys. But you will play quarterback also. And he's he's fine with it. And even Sterling because we sat him down. Because, you know, you're looking at a guy who's a an out, unbelievable athlete. And so you're sitting there saying, okay, we're going to be letting him sit on the bench when he can be on the field helping us say, right. no, that's not going to happen. Put him out there, put him somewhere. Then if we need him at quarterback, we'll put him at quarterback. But right now, we're going to use him somewhere else. He looks pretty good out there as well. All right, uh, coming up next, uh, David Pierce, the brand-new uh, Texas Longhorn baseball coach, will join us when we continue with Longhorn Weekly here on the Longhorn IMG Radio Network. I'm very pleased to be joined uh, by brand-new University of Texas Head baseball coach David Pierce, who's with us now. Glad to have you with us. Thanks a lot, Craig. It's you don't great feel to be brand here. new anymore now. You've been on the job for a little bit. I have three months. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, first of all, before we get into talking some baseball, let me get your thoughts on you were obviously in the stadium and, and were uh, feeling a part of that vibe that had 102,315 fans. And what, what was your takeaway from from uh, that whole experience on Saturday, Sunday night? Well, it started Sunday morning. We had recruits on campus at the stadium, and they just kept rolling in. And then we were able to walk over to the T Association. You could really feel the vibe right then, uh, the excitement, uh, a lot of energy and a lot of expectations of the fans. And once you got into the stadium, it was just electric. And that's what I told Charlie. I sent him a text after the game. And I just thought it was just an unbelievable environment, just excited for our uh, – University and the and the students and uh, everybody involved. I mean, there's a lot of people who've been waiting on that, and to see Charlie's team do what they did against a great Irish team was real impressive. Because you know, immediately they got behind and and they it didn't phase them, and they just did a great job of coming back. They kept their cool, 
and they played a great football game the entire game, and uh, it was just real impressive and a lot, a lot of fun. You brought up the fact that, of it being a recruiting weekend, and, and I know that uh, uh, Karen Aston had a lot of recruits in. There were recruits in for uh, Texas women's basketball, Shaka Smart for men's basketball. Obviously, there were football recruits. How valuable is it? to have recruits in on a football weekend, A, like that, and then B, to have it go the way it did with the game uh, unfold the way that it did. Well, believe it or not, we had 27 recruits there, um, which was a huge number. And Drew, our our baseball ops position, Drew was sitting with them, and he said they were going crazy wild. So I think if that's any any indication of what's going on, our recruits felt it, so I'm sure all the other recruits felt it, and it's huge for us. Um, to be in that environment, to kind of get a real good taste of what it's like to be in that environment, being a Texas Longhorn, boy, you can't beat it. And the game was perfect. Um, I think everybody stayed to the very end, too. Well, you're a native of this state. You spent most of your 27-year coaching career in this state as well. So how natural a transition was it for you even though you were at Tulane University before you coming back over how natural a transition was it for you coming back over to the state of Texas to be the head coach of the Texas Longhorns uh, it just felt so good I mean to come home um, two and a half hours from Houston where I'm from but my daughter graduated here in 2012 so such an easy transition for us and uh, you know it's just been perfect and we're really uh, our team right now is really working hard um, transition's been great and easy uh, and it's all about the people and the people at the university have been just extraordinary because you know you think a big university university of texas and you think it it, it just kind of runs on its own but it really doesn't it's it's about the people involved and uh, the family atmosphere is really incredible all right now when we come back we're going to talk about what coach pierce has in terms of his baseball team right now and uh, what he's looking to accomplish and what he's looking forward to projecting to do as head coach of the Texas Longhorns. This is Longhorn Weekly. We're here live from Pluckers, the West Campus location, and we'll continue when Longhorn Weekly continues right here from Pluckers on the Longhorn IMG Radio Network. We welcome you back to Longhorn Weekly. During this course of program, we're talking Longhorn Baseball with uh, brand new head baseball coach David Pierce, although I got to ask about that uh, Shane Bouchelle was his first career college touchdown pass, and, and he didn't – he seemed very poised to be a, for a true freshman. And I know the true freshman in baseball, it's a little more commonplace with what they contribute as opposed to football, but it, but it always does a coach's heart good to see a true freshman be able to perform at that level, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, he's got that it factor, and uh, – I don't think he was phased. I think he had a lot of nervous energy, which is what you want if you're going to be ready to play a football game in front of 102,000 people. But uh, poised the entire way. Uh, I thought him and Swoops did a great job of handling the offense, and uh, the defense was outstanding. I mean, I'm a huge football fan to begin with, and then to watch the Longhorns do what they did was uh, just really easy to watch. Now, you're going to have some very talented freshmen coming up, but you've also got some returning veterans for, yeah, for your first team coming up in 2017, don't you? Yeah, we really do. I mean, we've got uh, Casey and Cody Clemens are back, and they played every day. We have uh, Joe Baker that's got a chance to be a, a really good player in the middle of the field. Uh, you know, you can go down the list. Travis Jones, um, Brett Boswell, Summer League Player of the Year in, in, in the national uh, spotlight, and, and then – uh, Zane Gerwitz. So we've got a pretty good nucleus, a very good nucleus. And I think there's a great expectation from the players to to get off on the right foot. We've got a tough schedule coming up. Yeah, and, and before we get to that, I also was going to ask you about your pitching because you've got some veteran pitchers coming back as well. And, and you're kind of – I won't say you're an unusual creature in this, but right. because, because some head coaches – at the Division One level, do go ahead and handle their pitching, right. their pitchers themselves. But it, but it's I guess a little more uncommon than it is common, and yet it's something that you've naturally evolved into during all of the years as an assistant coach that you'll handle your pitchers. I, I do, and I do for a few reasons. Uh, first of all, the head coach and the starting pitcher are the only two that have their individual names on the win or the loss. So it's my responsibility to make sure we're ready in that category. But I, it's, it's what I like to do, and I have a great pitching coach that's with me, Phil Haig, 
that uh, we kind of do a combo on him, and he does most of the day-to-day, and I'm able to manage the game. And with his expertise being with me now five years, it really frees me up to not have to see every pitch but see a lot of it in the bullpen work. And uh, it also allows me – to watch Coach Allen and Coach Miller working with the hitters and put my two cents in or just be a resource for them. So I think we have a very unique staff. And uh, when you look at the starters and some of the arms that we have in, we have coming back, I mean, you look at Morgan Cooper that's got a chance to be lights out this year. It looks like a big leaguer throwing his bullpens. Uh, Connor Mays had a very good summer. He's got a chance to be a, a, a weekend-type guy for us. Kyle Johnson, same situation. And then we've got some other guys that really fill in the blank. One kid that's really impressed me so far is uh, the left-hander we have, Nick Kennedy. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nick's got a big arm. Um, I think just the command is something that he's got to continue to work on. But we definitely have a very good nucleus to start with. You you brought up uh, briefly uh, the newest members of your coaching staff. I wanted to give you a chance to tell folks a little bit more about what these guys bring to the party for you. Well, first of all, it's not the Tulane staff that we transferred over. It's the staff that I developed when I went into Sam Houston State, and these guys have been with me since day one. And uh, to me, that's very unique and something that I'm proud of is that, you know, they were able to handle my criticism or my dealing with me, and uh, we've just developed in such a great staff. And Coach Allen is a, a veteran of 37 years old, but he, he's been in the business for a long time. He's very good with our offense and our infielders. Coach Miller is our first base coach. Uh, Coach Allen coaches third, runs the offense. And Coach Miller is our first base coach, handles our catchers and outfielders. I think one of the best instructors in the country. And then we've talked a little bit about Phil Haig. And we did retain Drew Bishop, and uh, he's been a rock for us and just been that foundation to kind of get us moving forward. You uh, briefly mentioned the schedule, uh, and and you and I uh, talked a little bit about it. I kind of refer to it as – the David Pierce reunion tour because uh, <laughs> places where you have been and have excelled uh, both as an assistant and as a head coach are on the schedule this coming year. They really are. And it's really ironic because I spent nine years at Rice as it's well documented, but um, we open up with Rice in a four game series here. Um, we needed a couple of more midweek games. So we added a Sam Houston state, which is the following Tuesday of the opener against Rice. so A road trip to uh, to uh, Huntsville. That might be a first, and that might be a huge um, huge venue and a huge night for Sam Houston State, and hopefully we perform well. But, you know, and then our weekend schedule's tough. It's good. We have UConn, who's an American athletic conference school that we competed with the last two years. Uh, very solid, great uh, Jim Penders. Is actually, his brother is uh, Coach Penders here at yep. St. Edwards. Um, and Jim does a great job at UConn. We go out to Palo Alto and keep that series going against Stanford. And then we finalize our non-conference schedule against UCLA at home. And then we got the Big 12 schedule. So uh, there's no rest in it. You also have a midweek trip for our listeners on the network down in the Corpus Christi area. Get excited about That's this right. because the Longhorns went down and played Texas A&M Corpus Christi several years ago, played at Whataburger Field. It was jam-packed, sold out, and, and, and you're going back there to play them again. Well, it gives us an opportunity to expand and go into some of the markets that we recruit, and, 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 and it gives us a chance to go in the markets that really support us. And South Texas has been very supportive of the University of Texas. It's a great venue at Whataburger Field, and so it makes all the sense in the world for us to go play, and it's a double-A park. So, you know, we'll have a good surface, and uh, we expect a great crowd. In your coaching back history you have never shied away from going anywhere and playing anyone and sometimes the Tuesday night game is looked at as being the sore thumb or the the outlier game and and some coaches aren't really fond of those things but yet you kind of embraced it as to what you want to see from your program on those Tuesday night or those midweek games well we have really just played that as the fourth game of the week and that's how we've looked at it it's no different than a Friday or Saturday And to me, the difference is when you play well on Tuesdays and Sundays. Uh, Sunday's a tough turnaround. It can make a difference of sweeping, winning a series, or avoiding a sweep. And we've had a big Sunday win, and it was really to avoid a sweep to keep us in contention and to also keep us in that at-large position. So every single game we play, we present it to our our players as it's just as important as a weekend series or – uh, a conference series, and that's how I want our guys to approach it. 
Big 12 had uh, three teams in Omaha again. That is, it, yeah. it's, it's rapidly emerged as one of the best baseball conferences in the country. You know that going into the thing. Yet, what kinds of expectations can you yourself have for what you want to see your program accomplish this well, season? Well, it's all about a process, and it's all about getting better every single day. And when you start putting uh, really hard goals in early, uh, it, you know, you can put a lot of pressure on yourself. What I want to do is make sure that we're ready to play every week and uh, our guys are getting better and we process and, and learn from wins as well as learn from losses and, uh, you know, kind of get a, a, a mentality of an expectation that when we face anybody in the country, we feel like we're going to win the game. We're going to steal a game here and there. We're going to drop a game here and there. But, you know, we just want to be prepared for that and understand at the end of that game, we've got to be ready for the next game and move on. It's a long grind. It's not one weekend. It doesn't – your, your season's not determined in week one, nor is it in the last week if you haven't taken care of your business early. So it's just a very good, consistent approach. And, uh, you know, we want to go through this process and really be as good as we can be every single week. And I think health is such an issue with us. And uh, if we can do that, I think we have enough talent to really – Make a push. Final thing here, you got your guys going through fall ball workouts, and you got yeah. the fall World Series coming up. That's right. We've got uh, our actual eight-hour period ends uh, tomorrow, and then, excuse me, Monday, and then Tuesday we start our 20-hour period, our team fall period, which is uh, uh, our end season of fall ball, and we play a lot of inner squads. We're, we've got something kind of special this year. We're going to go to Houston and play the USA 18 and under team, uh, on grass at the Urban Youth Academy, which is a, a great inner city facility and it's sponsored by Major League Baseball. It's a great promotion for us, but it gives us a chance to kind of expedite the things that we're trying to do in the fall and put us against an outside opponent, which I think is so critical with the team that is trying to get to know a coaching staff as we're trying to get to know the team. All right. Great to see you. I appreciate you stopping by. Thanks a lot, Craig. Enjoyed it. All right. David Pierce, the Longhorns baseball coach. Coach Strong will rejoin us when we continue to hear more of Longhorn Weekly here on the Longhorn IMG Radio Network. Play action back to Burns. He's looking for Burke. Down the right sideline. John is open. He'll catch it this time. John Burns on the five. Touchdown, Texas. We just got through saying tight single coverage. That's a recipe for disaster if you're an opposing cornerback. And John Burke just made the Irish pay. Back here on Longhorn Weekly with head coach Charlie Strong, live here from Pluckers, the West Campus location. And I, I uh, asked Sterling about this the other day, about uh, the recognition that, that Shane has been able to have early on. And in that, in that particular instance there with John Burke drawing that tight single coverage, it looked like Shane took one quick look over there and, knew that you were going to have a mismatch because of John's speed on the sideline. Well, if you look at it, the, the way we're aligned, uh, John was to the weak side, which is, you know, he's away from the trip, so he has that whole uh, field by himself. And he saw tight coverage, and he just let one. And we, But that's what we do every day at practice, and he was able to connect. You know, first when John, uh, my man Bert dropped in and he get a chance, I said, hey, don't worry about it. Come on, you'll be back. You're going to get an opportunity to catch you one. So then he ended up connecting on that one. Uh, here's some questions from here in the restaurant. Ryan wants to know, what was the biggest surprise to you about the game? Did you have one? What, anything really surprised you about the game? No, because I think once you get into it, you get into the flow of the game. It's kind of like you, you're expecting almost anything to happen. But uh, there was no no big surprises. It, you know, it just was happy just the way we played. Uh, Kelsey and Nancy wanted to know, we, we referred to this earlier, how much fun is crowd surfing? You look like you were having a blast. <laughs> I don't know. Those guys always pick me up. They picked me up there. Then I got in the locker room. They did it again. I almost threw me th through the ceiling there. But it, I think they enjoy it more. That they're yeah. just so happy. And, yeah. and, but you just you have to go. You have to go with it. Yeah, I started saying, you ever you, you get a little nervous and maybe they might drop you? <laughs> no, I'm always like looking, hoping. And when I come <laughs> back down, if they ever drop me, I'm gonna try to just you know just fall forward and make sure my legs hit first. Um, Cody's got a question uh, about overtime. Now, last Sunday's game was the first ever overtime game at Royal Texas Memorial State. It's only the third overtime game in UT history. And he wanted to know, did you tell uh, Shane and Tyrone anything specifically going into the last couple of minutes of the game? And then as you got ready to go into overtime, what you were looking for? 
No, if you look at the last, uh, probably the last four minutes of the game, and we do with this four-minute drill where you, you talk about how much time, and do you need to take a timeout, do you not t need to take a timeout. So we get, we get the ball back. We, ha we kick off, and if you remember, it was like 3.32 left on the clock. So we go out and stop them on defense. Then they punt the ball to us, and we have a good field position. Then we break off, uh, Foreman breaks off a big run. And so we have the ball down there, you know, across midfield. And even probably we're trying to just get a few more yards to get it into field goal range for our, our kicker. And then that's when we got a, a, a chop block, a penalty and then a bad snap. Then I just – after that, I just said, hey, let's just get it to overtime. And so when you get in overtime, it's nothing much. You, you, you just go ahead and – the ball's at the 25. You just run your offense. And, and defensively, they go out and they score first. And then we b bounce back and, and uh, we score. And now, uh, now we have a choice. And so I wanted to go back and play in the, uh, the end that we played at because I knew our S word, it was enclosed and our crowd would be loud. So I wanted them to go first because I wanted to see just what we need to do on defense. And so now they get a field goal, then we go and get a touchdown. Okay. Uh, we've got a couple other questions. It's going to pertain really to the opponent coming up for the Longhorns. When we come back, we'll talk about the UTEP Miners with Longhorn Weekly with head coach Charlie Strong live from Pluckers. The West Campus location continues in a moment. Third down and 13, blitz, look for the horns. Kaiser back, the throw, steps up in the pocket. Pressure coming, down he goes. Mark it, folks. Sack number one of the season for Malik Jefferson, who drags him down for a loss of four back of the 35. Back here on Longhorn Weekly with head coach Charlie Strong, Malik Jefferson, the sack there. Vance Bedford talked about it. You talked about it as well. You definitely want to see more out of your defense. However, it was encouraging to see those final three drives that the Irish had there late in the game. They had, had only a grand total of 19 total yards almost. Well, just defensively, we gave up some big plays there early, but you, you have to tackle a lot better. And, and third down, we want to get off field, which we did a better job, but could have done, you know, we, you're always looking to improve. But the last three drives were so critical because, we number, well, number one, we want to make sure they didn't get any points, and, and number two, get the ball back for our offense. Uh, there, there were a couple other questions from here in the restaurant. One uh, asking, how do you keep your team from being overconfident this week? The other one from Shelby saying, what adjustments are you preparing for this week's opponent? So both of those lead us into talking about UTEP. Uh, and, and the thing that really leaps off the page is their offense was really in gear, led by their running back, Aaron Jones. Well, last uh, last week they put up over 500 yards of offense, and you're right with Aaron Jones, and, and then they rushed for to what 200, over 200 plus yards. So it's, our hands are going to be, uh, they're going to be full. We're going to have to go out, and we're going to have to play with good fundamentals. We're going to have to play with good technique, and some of the things we didn't do that night, we need to separate, get off blocks, and we do need to play with confidence. And we talk about confidence. I always say to our players, you never play an opponent, you play in yourself. How good can you be today? And it's all about you making yourself better and you just looking to improve. And you know what you need to improve on. Let's make sure that happens. And it's not like you're not preparing for an opponent. You prepare to play UTEP because you look and see what the assignments are for the guys. But it's about the individual uh, uh, attention to detail that they have to do within their own preparation to prepare for that opponent, isn't it? And, and they do. And it's, it's all about them like just studying, studying film. It's, it's always something to look for. and you, you, you always try to get advantage to your game. You know, would it be the split of alignment? Would it be the split of wide receivers? You know, the, with our, our offense, wide, with our wide receivers, they're always steady in defensive backs. But you got to study your opponent and, and making sure that when you walk into the game, you know everything that is happening around you. I asked you at the top of the program about getting their attention coming off a win as opposed to a loss. But needless to say, when they came <clears throat> off the uh, Monday that you gave them off, did you, did you have a team that was – all eyes on your focus, ready to go on to that next one and start to get ready to UTEP, despite the fact that the fans are loving what happened with the win over Notre Dame, and a lot of folks are still telling them about that, that they had to zero in on UTEP? Well, it was tough in the beginning because, you know, you play that game there on Sunday, and then Monday they had it all day off, so they heard it all on Monday. And, and you, what you look at it, Craig, it's been a long time since they've had it out, that feeling. You know, there's that feeling. That it's been a long time since they had it. So what you what you try to do then is just make sure that you can get them focused and you can get them turned back around and get them locked back in. Okay. I right. appreciate the time. We'll look forward to it on Saturday. I know you want to see another big enthusiastic crowd Saturday night. Oh, I'd love to. And, then, you know, and, and that's what helped more than anything. I told our coaches, I said that what's going to be key for us is our crowd. And I said make sure that you simplify the game plan. 
because they're going to play off their emotions of the crowd, which we were able to do. All right, it'll be Saturday evening at 6 o'clock, the kickoff at Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. Still a few tickets left for that. Hope to see you out there as the Texas Longhorns play host to the UTEP Miners. 5 o'clock will be on the air with a pregame here on the Longhorn IMG Radio Network, the kickoff at 6. Thanks to Longhorn baseball coach David Pierce for joining us. Thanks to Quan Cosby. For head coach Charlie Strong, I'm Craig Way. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week at the same time on Longhorn Weekend.